All right, hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're gonna be implementing this counter here. And this counter can be either seconds or moves. So that when you make a move, after everything is settled, it'll count down that move. Then um, when you get down to zero, it will create a game over state. Uh, or if you have it set to time, it'll work just like a regular timer. And then when the timer's over, you'll have game over state. So let's uh, get right into this. All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're gonna be taking a look at having a counter here that either counts down for seconds or moves. Uh, and then when the counter reaches zero, we're going to have a little message saying game over. Uh, next time, we'll be adding an actual game over screen to pop up, but for now, we're just gonna count down and then a game over message. So uh, let's get right in there. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I opened up my top UI scene here and Last time I used the top UI scene, hold on, let me, and whenever you use an animated sprite, it treats the margins kind of weird. So I just wanna take that over, and then if I expand it again, okay, cool, that's good. I couldn't see everything in my um, inspector, but anyway. Uh, so I've got my score label here, and then this is just label two. I'm gonna rename label two, I'm gonna call it the counter label, and uh, I'm going to structure this much the same way I structured my top UI. So if you take a look at the top UI script from last time, we have our uh, update score. So when we're getting our update score signal, we're going to go to our current score um, and then change the uh, score label text. So what I want to do here is make a reference to my counter text. And so just like I did with my score label, I'm going to make an on ready variable. So on ready var, and I'm gonna call this, oops, did I misspell ready? I did. I'm gonna call this counter label, and that's gonna be equal to margin container all the way down to counter label. I'm also gonna create a local variable for whatever the current count is. So var current count zero. All right, cool. So I'm gonna save this. Let's go out of distraction free mode here. I'm gonna go back to my game window and my grid, just like my grid has a uh, signal for updating the score, it's gonna have a signal for updating the counter. So I'm gonna open up my grid script and let's make this distraction free. I'm gonna go all the way up to where I'm declaring all my stuffy stuff um, up here. So where I've got my signals, I've got my obstacle signals, scoring variables. So after this, I'm going to add my counter variables. Counter variables. So I want to make a signal to update counter. I also want an export integer var current counter value. So what I want to have the counter start at. So this is what the number of moves you'd have your level start at or the number of seconds you'd have your level start at. And then I wanna have a export int var. And then this is gonna be, actually it's not an integer, it's gonna be a bool var. And I'm just gonna say this is moves for whether or not the counter should be for moves. Um, okay, so before I go any further, let me connect that signal. So on my grid here, I'm going to go to node, I'm going to find the update counter. Oh, <laughs> I got to get out of full screen here. I'm going to connect that to my top UI. All right, cool. And then now I've got this on grid update counter. So that's good. Now, if I go back to my grid here, let's talk about the logic of this. So I've got my signal, which will tell the uh, counter that it needs to update its amount. And actually, let's code that in really fast. If I go over to the top UI script here, I want to say uh, current count minus equals one, because we're going to be counting by one. And then counter label uh, dot text is equal to string 
current count. So that's going to change the uh, label to be whatever the, the number value is that we have for our current count. So next, if I jump back to the grid here, uh, what I want to do is write in ready, after I spawn everything, I'm going to send out that update counter signal. So update counter, oh, not that, emit signal, update counter. And that's going to make the counter move to be whatever its current value is. So let me save this. Let's go out of here. Um, I'm going to click on my grid here, and I'm going to look for that new variable I created. So my current counter, let's say that we want it to be 60 seconds. So 60 seconds, and it's not counting for moves. So when I hit play, I should see that label in the center. Oh, cool. Turn to negative 1. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wonder why that is. Let's find out. I broke something here. All right, so our current counter is 60. Oh, that's why. Because, cool. So I need to change something. So when we emit the signal here, we're going to pass in a variable as well. And that variable is going to be current counter value. Cool, to have it start out at the first current counter value. And then every time we update it from there, um, I don't think we'll need to change it, but let's, uh, let's go over to the top UI anyway so that this can take that in. And this is going to take in on amount. Well, hmm. Yeah, we'll call this amount to change but we'll overwrite it to be one by default. So when you create an overwrite here, if you don't pass in an argument, then it's going to be that by default. Um, and then, do, 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 let's say current count plus equals uh, amount to change. And then that means that the amount to change needs to be equal to negative one. All right, so let me explain that. So when you override something here, uh, that means that you don't always have to pass the argument in, uh, that there will be cases where the argument will just be whatever's here. So in my grid script here, in my ready, um, when I'm emitting the signal to update the counter, I'm passing in a current counter value, and that's going to override this amount to change. I'm going to take my current count, which is 0. I'm going to add the amount to change, which to start out with is 60. And then I'm going to display that. Now, when I'm not passing that signal or that argument through, it's going to have an amount to change that's one, negative 1. So then, like if it were 60, it's going to add negative 1, become 59, and then display 59. So I'm going to save this. And cool, let's try this now. Let's see if it works the way I want it to. All right, cool, there we go, 60. So now the next time, uh, it will reduce by one. So let's go back into Godot here. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to know if we're counting the number of moves that the player has or if we're counting the number of seconds that the player has. Uh, if it's the number of seconds, we're going to need to have a timer node here. So for my grid, I'm going to add a new child node. And this is going to be a new timer node. I'm going to have my wait time be one. This is going to be auto start. Um, I guess we, no, we don't need to auto start it. Instead, we can do that from from inside the grid. Uh, but I do want to connect the timer's timeout uh, signal. So I'm going to grab the timeout signal. Can I? Oh, I can just barely. All right, I'm going to connect that to the grid. And what I want to do here is I want to current counter value minus equals one. And then I also want to emit a signal, emit signal, um, update counter. And then that's going to change the counter value. I actually don't need to do this part since I'm already, well, no, I do because I want to have a local version of that here. Okay, so I'm going to save that. 
Uh, get rid of this little pass function here. All right, so if I set that timer to auto start, I should see the counter countdown, just like a regular old timer. So let's let's give it a try. So there we go. We got our nice little timer there. Now the problem is when the timer reaches zero, um, nothing is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another little method here that's I'll call declare game over. So function declare game over. And for now, this is just going to print game over. Um, in the future, we'll have this actually generate a game over panel. Uh, I also want my game over to change the game state so that I can't interact with anything. So I'm also going to change my state to be uh, wait. So I want to look at, because it's been so long since I messed with the state machine, I want to look at, there we go. So I want to set my state to be wait. So I want to print game over state equals wait. All right, cool. So now I'm going to turn my timer to not be auto start because I don't always want it to be um, to be something that uh, starts right away. Instead, in my ready function here, uh, I'm going to update the counter and then I'm going to say if not is moves. So if we're not counting by moves, that means we're counting by seconds. Then I'm going to do dollar sign timer dot start. So that should start the timer on its own, so long as we don't have that is moves checked. So let's, let's check that out. So is moves is not checked, and I do not have auto start on. But if I hit play, I should still see the timer countdown. All right, cool. I was like 90% sure that wasn't going to work like I thought it would. Uh, all right, nice. Uh, now, for our check for game over that we started doing, uh, way, 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 way down here. I know this seems massive, but like the match three version that I made in Unity, this class was already at like a thousand lines. So it's, I know it seems crazy, but <laughs> um, it's really not. So we're going to check to see if current counter value is zero. Then we want to declare game over and we want to turn the timer off timer.stop. All right, so then it's only going to count down until it reaches zero. To check whether or not this is going to work, uh, I'm going to change my, um, my current count from 60 to 10, because I don't think you guys want to just watch for a minute while we kind of, while we watch a timer count down. So 10, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, reaches zero and then it doesn't go to negative one. Now it should also be in the wait state so I can't interact with anything. So we're at game over. All right, now let's make it work for moves. So it's working for a time requirement for our game. Let's make it move, work for a move requirement for our game. So to do this, what I want to do is check to see like way the heck up here uh, in my ready function, I check to see if it's not moves timer.start. So now, after I finish a move, which happens in the after refill method, I want to check to see if is moves, then I'm going to update the counter. So I'm going to say um, current counter value minus equals one, and then I want to s emit the signal to update counter and then I want to check to see if current counter value is zero I want to do declare game over alright so I'm going to save that and let's pop out here uh, let's go to my grid I'm going to leave it on 10 
I'm going to set it to is moves this time. Now if I hit play, I shouldn't see it count down like a timer. Instead, I should see a countdown every time I make a move. And you see it's not counting down. But so there's one move. Two moves. Now I'm going to fast forward here just to make sure that we see that it works the way that we would expect it to. Okay, so my counter's at zero now, so I should not be able to make a move. All right, awesome. Again, I was like 90% sure I'd be able to make a move there. So, cool. Uh, we have our end game conditions now. Uh, you can set your board in your grid class. So when you're making a new level, you can decide if you want your level to be, or to have a requirement of a certain number of moves or a certain number of seconds. And then when either of those elapses, it's game over. And then you can decide, you know, it, did they meet the requirements? Did they not meet the requirements? That's when you can put up, you know, did you win or did you not win? So, cool. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. I saw that the, some people had found some uh, weird bugs that they had suggested fixes for. I'm gonna go through all those this weekend and um, make sure that, you know, that any fixes need to be implement that need to be in, implemented will be so we'll be talking about that next week uh, i really appreciate anybody who does that anybody who goes through and finds something wrong and tries to help us uh, i want this to be the best it possibly can be so you guys are all amazing and i hope you get exactly what you want for your birthday uh yeah otherwise um hey you can follow me on twitter you can join discord to find out when i post new videos and i hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day if you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.